the last of the cowboys to get the F gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. After the trucking for kids show, and we're sailing back eastbound, and I say we because we got a truck that uh, has become uh, visually familiar to a lot of people. Uh, that will be uh, Mr. Caleb Hammett. Uh, we're headed back east to Texas. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself formally uh, for those that don't know uh, know who you are and tell us who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name is Caleb Hammett uh, with Hammett Excavation. We're based out of Dodge City, Texas. Well, let's go ahead and start from the beginning as far as uh, uh, what you do, uh, how you found yourself into a truck, and, and all that other good stuff. Well, it all started whenever I was barely old enough to remember I rode around in a truck with my dad on uh, oversized loads for our excavation company. And that's whenever I fell in love with trucks. Uh, and then it just went so on and so forth with my love of trucks throughout school and all that. Whenever I graduated high school, I got my CDL and started driving uh, in the state of Texas, uh, hauling oversized. Pulled my first 232 with a, a 470 excavator, weighed about 205,000, uh, and pulled that whenever I turned 18, 18, 19, somewhere around there. And uh, I, I've just been hooked to hauling heavy equipment for a very long time now. and. It, it's something that I love because it's an adrenaline rush whenever you got a machine on the back, whenever it's hanging off the trailer or you weigh so much, it's just an adrenaline rush. Yeah, I do know that feeling of what it's like to, to have a big chunk of metal or just a, a large mass of weight back there. And, and it's, it's logistically challenging uh, in many different ways, not just logistically, but physically. and. And, and spatially challenging. How do you get a big object through uh, small spaces? So I, I, I know that challenge, it's a good feeling. It's, it's definitely pretty fun getting them big pieces of iron in like subdivisions and down through like downtown Dallas and all that. It, 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 I just find that challenge kind of fun and it's just fun. All right, well, let's uh, tell us about the truck that you're running there, uh, you know, how it came to be. So don't spare any details. Uh, so year, make, model, drivetrain, all the goodies that you got on it. You know the build process. Uh, take us, take us uh, through that. It's a 2017 Peterbilt 389, uh, double frame throughout the whole truck. Uh, it's got 20,000 pound front end axle, 52,000 rears uh, with two speed rear ends, 390s on the high side, and 536s on the low side. Uh, it's got a C15 Caterpillar uh, motor in it, just stock right now, uh, 6NZ. It's got an 18-speed trans transmission in it. Uh, the colors are charcoal gray and Bible red. And Chris, to be honest with you, we built this truck in memory of my grandpa that started the company back in 1963. He passed away in, at the end of uh, 2014 with uh, lung cancer. And these two colors were his favorite colors right here. And we wanted to build this truck in memory of him and everything. So we teamed up with Jake Lindemood out of Irvin, Texas, one of our real good buddies. And he's the one that actually built this truck for us. And 
Well, so what we wanted to do on the stripes and everything, uh, we wanted it to have a little bit of a new school look and an old school look at the same time. So that's why on them stripes on the hood, it kind of looks kind of a newer look, more futuristic, I guess you could say. And then whenever you start going back towards the uh, door and the sleeper and how it wraps around all the way back, it's it's kind of that old school old school two stripe looking kind of deal. And then we put the WTI gangster fenders on there just for a clean, slick look. Uh, whenever we was building this truck, I, I didn't want it. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of chrome, but I'm not at the same time. So we wanted a little bit of chrome and everything, So, yeah, but not too much to where it was just sitting there blind and everyone. So we put these six-inch custom-built drop panels built by Jake. Uh, put, a, put them on there, painted them and everything. And, put the lights underneath there so you can really see them uh, just for more of a cleaner look. Uh, I've got eight inch Dynaflex stacks on it and uh, then on this front wheel up here we got the roll-on customs uh, lug nut covers and they're pretty pretty cool because they're solid built aluminum and they surprised me in Dallas uh, with the set and it actually had my grandpa's signature uh, to the T on them, along with our logo, and it was pretty cool. And yeah, that's that's about all on the truck. With that particular setup of truck, is is that one of many that your that your company has, or is it a, a one-off of its type? So explain, you know, that, and also how you use it there for the company. We've got two heavy hauls, but they, the other one ain't specked out to, like this one is. Uh, this one's kind of a one of a kind because this was our first show truck that we built. And when, we, when we built it, we didn't plan on showing it, but one time at Dallas. And then we got that bug, of course, and had to start showing it a little bit more. But no, we, this is a one of a kind truck in our fleet. Uh, I'm in the process of building a couple more just like it. Well, that's going to be pretty exciting. So you, you got bit by the bug so bad that you decided to build some more show trucks. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, put them to work. So uh, once we get around these trucks up here, uh, uh, I'm going to slide next to you so we can get a look at that trailer. And you can explain uh, what the trailer does for you. In the meantime, I want you to tell me uh, why did you have Jake Linda Mood build the truck for you? Jake's been one of our friends for a long time now. And... Uh, me and my dad approached him one day and said, hey, uh, we kind of want to get you to team up with you to build a truck. So, we get a nice truck, and he, he said, okay, because, you know, Jake, he, he built, he's known for building real awesome trucks. I mean, he's built some top-of-the-line trucks and a lot of show winner trucks. And so we teamed up with him because he's just one of our good buddies and his reputation. And... Uh, we just started building it. We we mainly just built it to be a really nice work truck, but like I said, we got bit by the bug. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, is your company strictly Peterbilt? We yeah, have got all Peterbilts but one truck, and that was our very first truck that we ever had, and it's a uh, Kenworth W900, but that's the only Kenworth that we have. So let's go back to uh, the, the earlier years when you uh, were just about to get into a truck or even before that uh, and you said that you would ride with your dad and uh, you fell in love with with trucking that way uh, let's go back a step further and talk about your grandfather what were some of the things that he did then and how did that cross over into your dad and what you guys currently do well he's the, my grandpa he started the company in 1963 uh, he was a Korea vet and he came back and he decided he wanted to buy a bulldozer. Well, him and my grandma put their money together and bought a dozer and he'd work at the electrical plant during the day, I mean at night, and then he'd run a dozer in the day, barely getting a couple hours of sleep. And then uh, we, had, we grew and grew and before you knew it, we had about 30 employees and we, we thought we was huge having 30 employees. And... Uh, Back, and then it fell into my dad's hand and then we started to get a couple more dozers and a couple more excavators and and then we bought uh, that Kenworth well we got that Kenworth and 
that's what I grew up riding in, is at Kenworth, and I, I never did sit back there in the sleeper. I was sitting there in that passenger seat, seat watching my dad the whole time. From loading equipment, I'd sit in, sit in his lap and help him load equipment, and I'd try to drag chains, even though I was too small to pick up these half-inch chains and everything. But then, uh, my grandpa, he finally retired, well, so-called retired, uh, I guess that would be back in uh, 2012, and uh, he handed it down to my dad, and, and he uh, he would just sit there and sit on his dozer around the house every now and then, and get on it and push a couple trees and clear some timber and everything. And uh, and now we we've, we've grown uh, to 150 employees. Now we we specialize in doing landfill sales and for like waste management uh, and then we also do 600 uh, subdivisions that have close to 600 to 800 house pads. Dan Hoare, that's pretty cool. You ain't about to be passed by no fleet truck, is you? No, oh, I got the lollygagging talking. Yeah, we gotta keep her moving. I seen that dude pop out and I'm like, yeah, no. It's pretty great how the company has grown from what your father established to uh, to what you have now. So what type of equipment do you move? And tell me about the trailer and how you use that. So it's a 20, uh, 2015 55 ton trucking uh, with a nitro boost stinger on the back. It's a detach. Uh, we haul a lot of dozers, a lot of excavators, and off-road dump trucks. Uh, what, what we do is we drop the trailer disconnect the neck from the uh, from the trailer and uh, then we'll drive the drive the piece of equipment over the ramps and load it on the trailer so that if you're loading the dozer set the plate down on a couple wood blocks and uh, and if you're loading the excavator set a block down so you can set the boom on. Well you make it sound easy so uh, hopefully we'll get to see you in action here uh, picking up some equipment as we move toward Texas. Sir. Now, with that trailer, do you have any favorites? I mean, some trailers are different, some, some you know, operate the same, but do you have any, uh, you know, favorite uh, portions of how this uh, trailer operates over others? I really like how this trailer has that nitro boost instead of the traditional shim and uh, leveling valves trailer. It, it just makes life a lot easier whenever you're ha trying to set that, uh, the right amount of pounds on the uh, back axle. You know, explain how that, that actually operates so someone can understand what's going on when you activate that. So what it is, is there's a, a hydraulic uh, cylinder there on the trailer and it pushes up on, I guess that would be the front of the uh, front of the booster. And you put your pressure with that hydraulic cylinder, what you need, and then there's a nitrogen filled tank there on the bottom and what it does is whenever you hit a bump that nitrogen give makes it give or take uh the i guess repercussion of the bump or anything it works just like a shock like uh there's a little motor on that uh booster and you crank that little motor and uh there's a gauge where it shows your uh your pressure and you just crank her down to whatever psi you want uh and then you just lock it in and roll on down the road. So I'm going to have you explain something for, for the viewers. Uh, your, your front tires are larger than the others. So explain the purpose for that you know some people watching this you may they may know right away uh why that tire those set of tires on the front axle are larger but i'm going to have you explain that for the people that uh, don't know okay so the uh so the bigger front tire the purpose of that is so you can get more weight on that front tire because having this 20,000 pound front axle having the wide tire at that as well it gets me the full amount of weight that i can get on this uh, front axle legally. That's simple enough, so it has to do with uh, surface area. Right. 
I'd imagine with where you go to pick up your machines as well, uh, you know, not everything is paved, so that tire would, uh, I've heard some people refer to them as float tires and things of that nature, so it helps you to, you know, get across some, you know, sand of that nature, or, or do, does it function that way? I mean, you can definitely tell the difference whenever you get in some mud or sand or something, because it don't just absolutely, the front end just doesn't sink down as bad as, I guess, what a, uh, what a little tire would sink down as. So somebody said to you, hey, uh, Caleb, I want to do the same thing. Uh, I, I don't know much about equipment, but I, I want to learn. What are some of the steps that they need to take to get in a position to, to start learning about heavy equipment in order to transport heavy equipment? And you need to, you need to know how to run the heavy equipment so you can be able to load the piece of equipment on your trailer first off. Uh, and then whenever it comes to the hauling aspect, it's not all just holding a steering wheel. It's a lot of mental, uh, mentally, you have to be there in the head to haul this stuff, especially going in that, like, a lot of situations whenever you go down into downtown uh, in major cities and stuff, whenever you have cars all around you, you just got to have some common sense and be mentally prepared for all, all that stuff that's a bit about to be coming around you. So when you go downtown or go into some of these situations, what's going on in your mind? What are you looking for out that windshield in order to have a smooth uh, delivery? I'm looking as far ahead as, as I can in the windshield, seeing if, if there's any traffic stops or anything like that. And then I'm constantly looking at my mirrors, making sure there isn't anyone crowding the load or anything. Because, I mean, you're sitting there 12, 13, 14 foot wide going down in these tight areas. You just got to watch your total surroundings, make sure that you, and plus, the reason why you look so far, as far as you can ahead of you is because you're so heavy, these trucks just don't stop on a dime. You got to be prepared for a traffic jam or something, uh, and that's why you look further up the road. Give me an example, because to some people that might be, oh, does that mean looking a, a block down the road? For you, what does that mean? Me, I, I'm looking as far down the road as I can until I, that truck is just so blurry I can't see it. I'm looking that far as I, as I can down the road, because you're weighing as much as I normally weigh. You, you have to be stopping at least not two football fields long, but like four or five football fields long just to get a comp come to a complete stop. I mean, you just can't slam on your brakes and expect to stop. When it comes to maneuvering in the city, what are some techniques that you use to make left or right-hand turns or, or even any turns anywhere? You know, what do you do to, uh, to, to get around? If I'm coming up to a turn, like a right-hand turn, for instance, I'll take up two, uh, two lanes and then whenever the light turns uh, green or something, I'll get over in that left lane while my trailer's still over in the right lane and swing out wide. And what I try to do, I try to make my front tire almost hit the curb whenever I swing out so my trailer tires don't hit the curb and I don't damage a tire. So I guess you're talking about the opposing curb as you make that turn? Yes, sir. Uh, how do you deal with people that get frustrated uh, when, when you are trying to maneuver? Uh, do some people understand that you kind of got something big there behind you, or, or is it just a, a, a oblivious to them? Just oblivious to it. I mean, they'll come around, you tell you you're number one and everything, but you take a little grain of salt and just say, God bless you and have a nice day, even though they can't hear you. And, I mean, they're just miserable with their own life, because if they're just doing all that, then they're cussing you out, telling you you're number one and everything. Yeah, what do you do? We've made it quite a ways here. We're almost to Flagstaff, and I want you to tell me about uh, tell me about this trip coming out here and and what you thought of uh, the Trucking for Kids show, and if you got any hardware to take back with you after the show. Well, uh, me, Eric Turner, and Randy Manning came out here from Joplin and uh, rolled out here for Trucking for Kids uh, for Renegade. Uh, we came out here and. We had a good time. I mean, there was a lot of large rides out here in Cali that you, I would never think that was out here. And it was just cool to see everything. And 
we did end up coming home with a little bit of hardware. We won first place in the conventional uh, 2017 to 2018 three axle. Um, so we did come home with a little hardware, but we don't go to these shows just to get get a trophy. We go to fellowship and have a good time with all our buddies. Ted Hora now. That's pretty cool. What was your impression of, uh, of the show? I mean, if you had to kind of describe it to somebody else. The show was a real laid-back show. I, I absolutely, absolutely loved it because it was just such a good time getting to relax. It wasn't one of them white glove shows to where I had to completely tear down the truck just to get ready for the show. It just mainly just to wash and put some tire shine on it, make the aluminum shiny and have fun and sit back and relax and that's what I really enjoyed about it. After showing in some tough competition shows all year, it was good to have a show with the, for the last show that was real, uh, real relaxed. You say the last show, so uh, what happens from here on out? We're cruising back to Texas, so what are you going to get yourself into? Well, we're just going to work all winter and maybe do some upgrades to a couple of things on the truck to get ready for next show season and then just before Louisville, we'll tear down the truck again, get start repainting stuff that has rock kits from being on all winter and everything, and get ready for Louisville and go up there and do a little competing. Ten four, all sounds good. Chris, I want to give a special thanks to uh, Evan with Evan's detailing and polishing. I mean, throughout the show season, I mean, I met him up there in Louisville, and he he helped me out big time. And he squeezed me in to get polished at the last minute and ever since then he treated me like family heck even in louisville he, he drove me around and invited me to come eat with him nearly every night every night and everything and i, I want to give a big special thanks to him if it wasn't for him my aluminum and my paint wouldn't be looking like it does right now i mean he he played a big part in uh helping me get ready for Dallas because that was my dream is to win best of show at Dallas uh, and if it wasn't for him helping me tear down the truck up there at his place and then up there and uh, up at my place before Dallas I mean we wouldn't have got best of show I mean he helped me crawl underneath the truck and everything and I'm just very blessed to have him in my life and I can't wait to see what else comes to it whenever the, we get these next trucks ready for the show season and everything, and I'm glad to have him on board on part of my team. He does a fabulous job, and he keeps a lot of guys, uh, you know, not just motivated to, to, to show well, but, you know, keeps them looking good, and he's always putting his, his uh, best foot forward. Well, let's uh, get on down the highway and get yourself toward, uh, toward the pickup. So let's see what this thing looks like with a piece of iron going on it. Sounds like a plan.
Caleb, that uh, dozer looks pretty good there on the deck. Uh, what are some of the challenges on hauling a piece of uh, equipment like that? I'm just mainly trying to get it on the right piece of part of the trailer so you can actual everything out. This, luckily, this is a wheel dozer, so we don't have to really worry about it with this setup, the uh, truck and trailer setup. All right, then, well, you look pretty good uh, sailing down the road there. The truck sounds pretty good, and uh, we can catch it up with you soon there, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been a pleasure rolling with you, Mr. Poppy.